Americans are screwed. That is because US credit card debt has just jumped almost 19%, hitting a record of $930 billion. The amount of credit card debt that Americans have right now has literally never been higher. But you know as well as I do, that debt number by itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. We have to look at it in light of other things, like how much income people are spending on debt service payments and interest rates and delinquencies. So is this record pileup of credit card debt actually a big deal? Let's take a look at some numbers. Right now, the amount of income that households are sending towards consumer debt is right around the same level it was in 2019. Yes, it is on an upward trajectory, which means it will likely get worse, but right now it's not really that bad as compared to about 2019. But we are seeing a few other alarming statistics here. Number one, we are seeing a big increase in subprime borrowers. That's people with credit scores of 600 or lower. This is primarily going to be younger borrowers, such as Gen Z consumers, increasing their use of credit cards up to 64 in 2022. In addition to people with worse credit scores, subprime borrowers increasing their usage of credit cards, we are also seeing an increase in delinquencies, which is a bad sign. But how bad is that? When in doubt, zoom out. And while we can see that delinquencies have spiked over the last few quarters, we are just now nearing the bottom of delinquency rates from 2015 nowhere near where they were at on average during the 90s and the 2000s. And so credit card balances are at an all-time high. The amount of income Americans are devoting to credit card debt service payments, that is also on the rise, and delinquencies are on the rise. But these things together, when you zoom out, don't look all that bad. But wait, we are not out of the woods yet. There are a few more numbers here that we need to take a look at that show this situation might actually be more serious. So all things considered, are things actually looking better than what they appear given the record amount of credit card debt? Well, the credit card utilization rate would surely suggest that given the fact that credit card utilization is at almost an all time low. So what the heck is credit card utilization? Utilization. Credit card utilization is basically just the amount of credit that you are using compared to your total credit limit. This means that if you've got a $10,000 credit card limit and you've got a $1,000 balance, you're utilizing 10%. So credit card utilization is at pretty much an all time low, but does that ratio actually matter? I mean, imagine if you have a $100,000 limit on your credit card. That might be the case, but could you actually afford the minimum payment on a $100,000 credit card balance? There's a good chance the answer to that is no, which means there's also a good chance that most Americans, should they increase their credit to utilize all of their available credit, they would not be able to afford their even their minimum payments, let alone any chance of ever getting out of that debt. And so the credit card utilization rate being near all time lows to me seems almost meaningless. In fact, it might actually be more dangerous because it means that Americans right now have the ability to load up on a lot more debt that they can actually afford. And given the numbers we're gonna look at next, that might be a really big issue because it has to do with the reason why Americans are loading up on debt right now, and that is inflation, because American consumers have been squeezed. First, in order to save the world from a crash, the Federal Reserve printed trillions of dollars. That did stop the crash from happening temporarily, but then it sparked a wave of record-breaking inflation. That means Americans are now spending way more for everything than they ever used to. And now, in order to try and stop the inflation that the Federal Reserve caused, the Fed is jacking up interest rates, meaning all this debt is getting more expensive by the day for Americans without actually even needing to add any debt to the pile. And so while credit card debt is increasing and getting to a record high, and consumer loans, including other evolving plans, is also getting to a record high, we are now seeing a monstrous spike in credit card interest rates. And it seems like every month a new piece of data comes out that shows that the Federal Reserve is likely to continue raising rates for much longer than the market ever expected, which means 
everybody who loaded up on credit card debt is now finding it harder and harder just to pay their minimum payments, let alone try and get out of debt. To put this in perspective, the average balance right now is a little under $6,000. At the current average interest rate of nearly 20%, if you make your minimum payments, it would take you over 17 years to pay off the debt. Yes, you heard that right. If you've got about six grand on a credit card with an average 20% interest rate, it will take you 17 years to pay that off if you can only afford the minimum payment. This is why I always say that debt is dangerous. It doesn't mean you shouldn't use it, just like a kitchen knife. It is dangerous if you don't know how to use it. Using it the wrong way could land you in a very bad position. This is how it is with debt. If you use it the wrong way, you could get stuck and enslaved to debt. And in my opinion, carrying a balance on a credit card is the wrong way to use debt. This means that if you are currently in the position where you're trying to weigh the odds and figure out whether it would be better for you to sell some of your investments to pay off your credit card debt, it is almost certainly a better idea for you to sell those assets and pay off those credit cards because you're losing 20% to that credit card debt. Are you making significantly more than 20% on your investments right now? Likely the answer is no, which means you will get an instant boost on your net returns by selling investments that are averaging 5%, 10%, even 15% and using that to pay off your debt. This is not a recommendation other than the recommendation to do some math because most investors make their biggest mistakes based off of feelings and emotion and they haven't made those decisions based off of logic, math and finances. And as inflation continues and interest rates continue to move higher and credit card utilization rate is still pretty low, it's very possible credit card balances continue to go up as Americans load the credit cards up just to pay the bills and very soon get themselves to a point where they cannot pay it back. Putting this all together, number one, inflation is likely to continue for at least some time, which means number two, Americans are likely to continue to have to use credit cards more and more to afford their daily cost of living. Number three, this also means that interest rates are continuing to move higher as the Fed continues to try and fight inflation. Number four, this means that Americans are much more likely to find it harder and harder and harder to pay anything above their minimum payments on their credit card. And very soon, many Americans may not even be able to afford that, which means a soft landing is likely out the window and a hard landing is coming in fast. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.